Remember when finding a new or affordable power supply for your new PC build was the only difficult part? Man, I miss those days. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ, and today we're looking at a couple of newish power supplies from Enermax. Now, I know power supplies aren't the sexiest part of any PC build, but they are probably one of the most important components in the build. I mean, it is the part that supplies electricity to every other component in your rig. Pick a bad power supply and run the risk of releasing the magic blue smoke from your other PC parts, or worst case, and admittedly less likely, but possibly burning down your house. So what I have here today are two power supplies from Enermax. Now, first I wanna thank Enermax for sending these over to take a look at, despite me being very critical of a particular Enermax AIO and them seeing that video, they still reached out and sent me a big box of stuff to review. Pretty brave. Let's see if that confidence is warranted. What I have today is a sample from two of their power supply lines, a 500 watt Cyberbron model and a 750 watt Marblebron. Now these two lines of power supplies are essentially the same with a couple of differences. The Cyberbron line comes in 500, 600 and 700 watt models and are non-modular while the Marblebron line offers 550, 650 and 750 watt models and our semi-module. Both these power supplies are 80 plus bronze rated and come with a five year warranty and are supplied with all black flat ribbon type cables. The 750 watt marble bronze PSU delivers a maximum of 130 watts combined on the 3.3 volt and five volt rails and 744 watts on the 12 volt rail. The native or attached cables include the 24 pin ATX cable and two four plus four pin EPS or CPU cables. The module cables include two dual six plus two PCI cables for a total of four connections and four cables that each contain two SATA power connectors and one Molex connector each. One of those cables also has a floppy disk drive connector. The PSU itself is compact for a 750 watt unit measuring it at 150 by 140 by 85 millimeters and has a standard 120 millimeter cooling fan. The 500 watt Cyberbron delivers a maximum combined 110 watts on the 3.3 volt and 5 volt rails and 456 watts on the 12 volt rail. Native cables include one 24 pin ATX cable, one 4 plus 4 pin EPS cable, one dual 6 plus 2 pin PCI cable, two SATA power cables with three connectors each, and one Molex cable with three connectors and one FDD connector. The Cyberbron has the same dimensions as the Marble Bron and is also equipped with a 120 millimeter fan. However, the Cyberbron has a six blade airflow focused fan while the Marble Bron has a nine blade fan capable of higher static pressure. Aesthetic wise, they're both very simple designs with finishes that complement their naming. The Cyberbron having a sandblasted texture and a gray with metallic fleck finish, while the Marble Bron has a stone texture and a matte black finish. Both units are fairly well built and do include quality components, including second tier Japanese TK capacitors. All in all, I don't have any major complaints with the components, construction, or design of the power supplies. On the surface, spec-wise, and from the components I recognized, no warning signs jumped out at me. If I had to be nitpicky, I'd say the second EPS cable on the Marble Bronze 750 watt unit could have been modular, not native, as most people who are using a 750 watt PSU will probably only need a single eight pin cable for their build and the Cyberbronze EPS cable is split, which at first I thought might have been split so you can run just a single four pin cable for a low power motherboard, but it's not. The 12 volt and ground lines are what's split. But for the important part, how do they perform and are they going to fry your system or burn down your house? 
Well, to be honest, I've already done long-term stress testing and variable power testing on both of them. For long-term testing, I installed these power supplies in full gaming rigs, the Cyberbron, Marblebron. And I put full load on the CPU and GPU fans at 100% and let them run for a full seven days. Neither system encountered any problems, no crashes or glitches, no overheating, no over voltage issues, nothing. The systems ran flawlessly for the entire week under full load. For variable power testing, you saw my last video, the Intel i5-11400 review. I used the Marble Bronze 750 watt PSU on my test bench to do all that benchmarking, which included four different CPUs and four different GPUs and a total of almost 300 benchmark runs with zero problems. For the 500 watt Cyberbron, I used it on this AMD test bench to benchmark five different AMD APUs from a two core Athlon to an eight core 4700G. I even stretched its limits by adding an RX 5700. Again, no issues. So that testing is done. And again, I'm pretty confident in the performance of both of the power supplies. What I'm gonna do today is test the efficiency of the power supplies. Now, I have no real doubt that these are actually 80 plus bronze rated, meaning that they should be at least 82% efficient at 20% and 100% load and at least 85% efficient at 50% load. Just to very quickly explain efficiency, a PC power supply takes alternating current or AC power from your wall outlet and converts it to direct current or DC power, which is what a PC uses. Now, not all of the AC is converted into DC, some is lost, well, not lost, that defies the first law of thermodynamics. In the conversion process, most of the AC power is converted into DC, while some is converted into thermal energy or heat, hence the fan in almost every power supply. Now, the higher the rating, the more DC power is made and the less heat. That's why gold and platinum PSUs can have zero RPM fan modes, while some titanium models can have no fan at all. It's also important to know that the wattage of a PCU is the maximum DC power that can be supplied to your PC, not the maximum amount of AC power that can be pulled from the wall. For example, if this 750 watt PSU is 82% efficient at 100% load, then while it's supplying 750 watts of DC power to your system, it shouldn't be pulling more than about 915 watts from the wall. So this is what I'm gonna test, kind of. Now, there is equipment that I can connect this PSU to and it'll tell me exactly how efficient it is and map an efficiency curve for me. That equipment costs hundreds to thousands of dollars and I don't have any of it. What I do have is an 80 plus bronze rated Corsair 750 watt power supply that I know is actually 80 plus bronze rated. I've had it tested and I know it's 86.7% efficient at 50% load. I also have a kilowatt so I can monitor exactly how much power I'm drawing from the wall. So the plan is simple. I'll connect the Corsair PSU to my test bench, put it under load using the ADA64 system stress test and monitor the AC wattage being drawn. I'm also using cable extension so I can isolate voltage lines and take measurements of current being delivered to individual components with a simple clamp meter. Then I'll trade out the Corsair PSU with the Enermax Marble Bron and run the same test and we should get a about the same power readings from the wall and the clamp meter. I'm just testing an unknown against a known. So let's do this. Okay, so I got the Corsair CX750M connected to the test bench. It is plugged into the kilowatt and that idle. We're only pulling about 133 to 140 watts. Let's go ahead and start up the ADA64 stress test. I'm gonna stress the CPU and the GPU to get a full load on the system. All right, I don't think we're gonna quite hit a 50% load, but we'll get close. All right, so we're looking at about 350 watts from the wall. 
isolate my voltage lines here, getting about 9.2, 9.3 amps. So I'm looking at just under 120 watts on the CPU, 11.7 amps. And let's get real scientific here. Yeah, that Corsair is not putting out too much heat. Okay, now I got the Enermax Marble Bronze 750 watt unit connected to the test bench. Pull an identical wattage at idle. Let's go ahead and fire up the stress test. We're looking at the exact same wattage at load, maybe a couple, just a few watts higher. Not much, let's see. We're getting about the same to our CPU and GPU. Getting about one amp more here. Okay, and this isn't a hugely scientific test, but about one amp there. And the same here, 11.7. And for my completely scientific observation here, actually, this fan is spinning a lot slower and pushing a lot less air than the Corsair PSU did. A tiny bit of warmth to the touch, but still overall cool PSU. All right, finally, something I wouldn't really recommend for a system like this, but I did hook up the 500 watt Cyberbron power supply. I want to see how this can hold up to this system. Again, we're still idling at the same 130 to 140 watts. Fire up the stress test and see how we do. I expect this to go to a little higher because we're well past the 50% point here. So this is where the efficiency curve starts to come back down, but not bad. We're only looking about a four watt difference maybe. All right, that's uh, should be pulling somewhere between 10 and 11 amps here, let's see. About 11.7 again. Same here, we're getting hitting, hitting the 12 amp point, but not bad. And it's a very quiet fan, not blowing out too much air. And, and again, very cool, very cool power supply. So there you go. Both of these power supplies perform perfectly in every test I gave them and definitely fall within that 80 plus bronze spec pulling just a few more watts than the Corsair PSU, which is impressive considering the Corsair CX750M is made by Seasonic, which is one of, if not the top power supply OEMs. Now, don't get me wrong, that few watts difference does add up over time, but the compact size of the Marble Bron and the fact that it was quieter than the Corsair, albeit at lower loads, and it's about 10 bucks cheaper, it's definitely a solid option and not just for low budget builds, but really any build. And if you want to save even more money, the Cyberbron is also a good option as the corresponding Cyberbron model is $10 cheaper than the Marble Bron. For example, the 750 watt Marble Bron currently cost about $79, while the 700 watt Cyberbron cost $69. This 500 watt Cyber Bron costs $49. The 550 watt Marble Bron costs $59. Personally, I think the Marble Bron is the better deal as you get that extra 50 watts of overhead, but also semi module cables. With that said, though, even at a higher load, the Cyber Bron was quieter. Now, of course, my long term testing was limited to just seven days but it was seven days of continuous, about 50% load on each unit. Also, I did see a power supply supervisor chip in there. So you have all the standard over voltage, under voltage, over power and short circuit protection and a five year warranty should it ever release its magic blue smoke and stop working. Anyway, that's it for this one. You will see the Cyberbron again in the next video as it powered all the AMD APUs I tested. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Links to these are in the description. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.